earthly king and they receive instead a heavenly one. And it led me to think about how we let our earthly cares and our earthly political concerns um, act upon us in a way that I, I fear drives people away from the church. And as I gave this homily, um, I didn't really have anything uh, in mind on specific issues. I was just speaking generally. And it wasn't until after I gave it that I thought I should have been more clear about the issue of abortion because abortion, while it's a political issue in our, in our country, also um, firmly implicates the faith of the church and the teaching of the church. And so when I suggest at some point that if my political views are going to keep you from coming to church, I should be quiet. I want to be really clear that I'm not talking about abortion uh, because as an Orthodox bishop, as a priest, as a layman, we all have a duty to stand up for the church's teaching on that issue. And uh, that would include speaking out uh, against abortion, even if it were to anger someone else. So that being said, I did want to clarify that. I hope you enjoy the homily. Um, glory to God. Welcome to Hill Country Homilies, weekly homilies from St. Andrew Orthodox Church in Liberty Hill, Texas. St. Andrew's is an old calendar Orthodox church, sharing the faith of the apostles and the love of Christ with all who seek his truth. Now, let's listen to this week's homily. The gospel reading for today somewhat picks up from our reading for Lazarus Saturday and tells of the people that had come now to see Lazarus who Christ had raised from the dead and how on account of this miracle they began to believe on him. And it was at that time that they went down from Bethany into Jerusalem. And Christ, sending the disciples ahead, had them bring a colt of a donkey, a colt of an ass, to him. And he was seated upon it as he entered Jerusalem, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah. And the people who had heard of this miracle that he had done and who had heard that Christ was coming, they came to greet him and in front of him laid down the branches of palms, what we sing in the uh, hymns as the symbols of victory, the children with the symbols of victory laid these palms in front of Christ as he entered Jerusalem because to them, it was a celebration of victory. Their king was entering Jerusalem, but not their king in the way that we think of Christ the king. They saw Christ as the answer to a political problem that existed, which was the Roman rule over the city of Jerusalem. And here was this man, one of their own, raised up of great power and great mer miracles, coming now to enter and reclaim Jerusalem for the Jews. And they laid the branches in front of him, celebrating the soon to come, they thought, political change of Jerusalem. They sought and they celebrated and they welcomed an earthly king, many of them not even realizing that they were receiving a heavenly one. But politics are a fickle, fickle thing. You can be in the majority one day and the minority the next. You can have a popular cause that you're advocating today and then something happens and everyone's turned against it. And if you're still holding on to it, you're that voice crying in the wilderness. Politics are a fickle thing. And for those who saw 
Christ is an earthly king coming to save and change the political reality in Jerusalem, it would be so fickle that within days they wouldn't be crying, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. They would be crying, crucify him, crucify him, and turning him over to Pilate. They would be saying to the Roman consul, set free the robber and crucify the Christ. Politics are a fickle thing. And there is great danger, I think, when we mix politics and religion. I wouldn't say mix, but I would say confuse. Because it's far too easy for far too many people to mix the things of this earth with the things of heaven. On the regular Sunday, not the festal Sundays, but on the regular Sunday, we sing Psalm 145 every Sunday, the second antiphon. And we sing, put not your trust in princes or in sons of men in whom there is no salvation. Okay? We could just stop right there and sing that over and over so that we're reminded of this. No matter how wonderful we think any particular leader is or how horrible we think any particular leader is, that is just a man as Lazarus would say, of clay. In that man, there is no salvation for any of us. None. The psalm continues, his breath goes forth, he returns to his earth on that very day, his plans perish. But the Lord shall reign forever. Thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. See, we have, as human beings, a real tendency to seek this earthly power like those who thought that they were welcoming Christ into Jerusalem as the new king of Israel when the only kingdom that should matter to us is the kingdom of heaven. And on this Palm Sunday, we can reflect as to how badly those politics can go. And my concern is, well, I mean, we should all <laughs> sit back and think, wait, one day they're saying, blessed is the king that comes in the name of the Lord, and the next day they're saying, crucify him, crucify him. That, that by itself should tell us pretty much all we need to know. But, Here's my concern. And it's not a concern about anyone in particular. If, if you see yourself in it, though, you know, feel free to examine it further. But it, it's something I see with a lot of people who are Orthodox and who also have this interest in politics. And sometimes I think have a hard time separating the two of them. You know, and that is this. Do we allow our earthly cares to take such great weight on ourselves that we convict ourselves for failing to live the, the Great Commission? And, and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean here. We sing the Cherubic Hymn, right? Now lay aside all earthly cares that we may receive the King of all. Our earthly cares and the King of all, they don't mix. We have to lay them aside to receive the King of all. This isn't something that the Orthodox made up. It's not some man-made rule or service. No. Luke, in his gospel, says to the disciples, for this, Christ says to the disciples, for this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat, nor for your body as to what you will put on. In the apocryphal supplement of 2nd Ezra, put earthly cares away from you, throw down your human burdens, and lay aside your weak human nature. But we have such a hard time for this. And my concern is that we get so caught up in these things of the world that we drive away people who really need the church the most. We demonize people that disagree with us on political things when the only demons that we really need to be worried about are those that are sent to work for the evil one. 
And I'll give you an example of what you mean. I, I've, I've been doing this little experiment with mainly with online people because they're, they're the craziest. But if you ask somebody who's got huge political opinions, which political party is furthest away from God? Well, you know the answer you're going to give is the opposite of whatever party they believe in. If you ask a Republican which party, political party is further away from God, they're going to say, well, it's the Democrats. They support abortion. You know, some of them like socialism. And we know what that did to the Christians. It's, it's the Democrats. And if you ask the, the Democrats, you know, which political party is furthest away from God, they're going to say it's the Republicans. You know, they've got these policies that favor the rich and Christ tells us to care for the poor and they fight wars that f kill innocent people overseas where we don't have any place. And it, it's the Republicans. They're furthest away from God. So, you know, the, the answer you get depends on the person you ask. And you get that answer. And I want you to turn to that person and say, okay, well, then which, which party needs the church the most? Which party needs the church the most? And it's the ones, obviously, that are furthest from God that need it the most. You know, we demonize these people. And when we do that, what we really should be thinking is, these are the people that need God the most. How are our actions bringing them closer to God? When we call them names, when we accuse them of, of you know, doing the work of the devil, is that bringing them closer to God? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I always ask myself, and you know, and and I've almost never will put anything into social media that has the slightest political tint to it. Not because I don't have political opinions, I do, but because if your political opinion is opposite of mine, and that makes you not want to come to church, then my opinion doesn't matter. No one needs to know my opinion if it's going to keep you out of church, right? And if we all took that rule and applied it to our life with other children of God, because that's what we should be seeing, not demons. You're not a demon because you vote a different way from me. If we took that thought and we saw children of God instead of demons whenever someone disagreed with us, how quickly would we be to scream about how right we are? Because if we think they're wrong and we think they're misled, we want them here in the church. And we're not going to get them here screaming at them. You know, Christ came into Jerusalem and they said, Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Two days before they said, Crucify him, crucify. Our words, our words are just words. And if my words would keep one of my brothers, a fellow child of God, out of church, I got nothing to say except come and see. Come see Christ. So brothers and sisters, let us glory with our Lord today on his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. But we know what's to come. Let us stop and remember that his kingdom is not the kingdom of this world. So let us put aside our earthly cares and embrace those people who our passions drive us to separate from, that all of them may come to know God and his son Jesus Christ, the salvation of mankind. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Glory to Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening to Hill Country Homilies. For more information, visit St. Andrew Orthodox Church at www.st-andrew.church. And please join us again next week.